Some consider Chinese audio equipment to be of excellent quality for little money, while others can't even be bothered to look at it. Both views are, of course, dogmatic and thus often unjust. I rather judge equipment on its merits, not its origin. And that's what I'll do with this Yulong DA10 DAC preamp and headphone amp. The Yulong DA10 is a digital analog converter, digital preamplifier and headphone amplifier that does PCM up to 768 kHz and DSD up to DSD 512. The company was founded in 2009 and the official name is Shenzhen Yulong Electronics Company Limited. The brand has been popular for some years now amongst headphone listeners. As you might know I'm not much of a headphone listener, but I like the Cocktail Audio HA500H that is functionally comparable. So I was interested if the DA10 is also a fine DAC preamp. But let's first explain where it fits into a stereo. Basically the Yulong DA10 is a digital to analog converter, DAC for short. It converts bits coming from a digital source to analog signals that can be amplified and sent to the loudspeakers. So it should be connected to an amplifier over RCA or XLR cables. The amplifier drives the loudspeakers. Then you can connect one or more digital sources like a CD player, DAT recorder, network player and even a game console. Depending on the device you use a special 75 ohm RCA cable for SPDIF, a special 110 ohm XLR cable for AES EBU or a Toslink optical cable is needed. You can also connect a computer-like device to it over USB, whether it is a desktop or laptop running Windows 10, Mac OS or Linux, a Raspberry Pi with appropriate software, a smartphone or tablet running Android or iOS. That computer then can be connected through your router to the internet and for instance a NAS. If you don't want the computer in the listening room, you can use a so-called network bridge which is essentially a remote USB port connected over the network to your computer. In that case you can place the computer elsewhere in the house and connect to it over the network. The network bridge is also connected to the network on the primary side and to the DAC over a USB cable. You do need software that supports this like for instance Audivana, iTunes, JRiver, Minimserver or Rune. You control what music is played over a smartphone or a tablet using the matching amp. The 3 mm thick aluminium housing gives it a sturdy feel. There are three color options, silver, red and black. It measures 220 by 248 by 66 mm and weighs 4 kilos. On the front write the rotary encoder that normally functions as a volume control, but after pressing can be used to select inputs, filters, sounds and outputs. To the left a 4 pole axolar for balanced headphones and a 6.3 mm jack for normal headphones. On the display indications for the sampling used, PCM or DSD, the chosen input, the sampling rate, the filter settings, the sound settings, the output and the volume setting. On the rear we see the IC mains input combined with a fuse holder and power switch and next to it the voltage selector that offers either 115 or 230 volts. Then the USB input to connect the computer to and three digital inputs, AES EBU, Toslink and SPDIF. Then a set of balanced analog outputs on XLR and a set of single-ended analog outputs on RCA. Looking inside we see a 50 VA toroidal transformer that together with the rectifiers and capacitors form the linear power supply. 23 locally placed voltage regulators minimize influence on one part from the circuit to the other. The D810 has the new Exmos XM208 USB interface chip that supports up to 768 kHz PCM and DSD 512. The AES EBU 
SPDIF and TOSLINK input signals are sent directly to the Intel Altera Cyclone 4 FPGA that runs Yulong's proprietary DSP software. It receives and recovers DOP64 and DOP128, PCM 16 to 24 bit, 32 to 384 kHz. It also provides jitter reduction, a FIFO buffer and phase lock loop. Volume is controlled by the 99 step analog volume control, the PGA 2311 by Texas Instruments. Switching to pure DAC mode bypasses the volume control. The op amps are from the professional graded OPA 1600 series. The DAC chip is the Asai KC AK4497. Remarkable is the placement of the oscillator crystals close to the FPGA instead of the DAC chip. The single ended headphones output and the balanced headphones output have their own amplifiers. These four channels have their own power supply circuit. According to the manufacturer they are class A, fully discrete, JFET input, constant current biased, heat coupled, compensated, carefully bias adjusted and high current outputs by MJD to 43 to 53. The first thing I notice is that there is no remote control. Understandable for headphone listeners will normally be close to the DA10, but for use as a preamp that's less convenient. All control is done using the volume knob. Turning it controls the volume, after pressing once it changes to the input selector, pressing twice lets you choose from three filter settings and so on. The other menus are sound character with three settings and output selection with the options preamp, pure DAC and headphone amp. The filters to choose from are sharp, slow and as slow. Sharp as the name implies rolls off sharply, causing post ringing. The slow filter rolls off slightly earlier but more gradually resulting in a 0.5 dB attenuation at 20 kHz. Nothing to worry about, you won't hear that half dB drop. The S-slow filter starts rolling off at the same point as the sharp filter but rolls off very gradually being at minus 0.6 dB at 40 kHz. Within the audio band there would be no audible difference were it not that the filters also influence time behavior. The sharp filter shows post ringing, the slow filter shows clearly less post ringing while the S-low filter has even less post ringing but now the reconstruction filter is not done properly due to insufficient filtering. We have seen the same with the QNAS DAC. The idea behind this is that the amplifier will do the remaining reconstruction filtering by nature. Whether that will lead to fine sounding results depends on the amplifier used. Some amplifiers might even get unstable, but if it works it offers you little time smearing. Time to put our ears to work. Since the sound character of the DA10 can be influenced by both the filter choice and the sound setting, let's work with that first. For as far as the filters are concerned, I would go for slow in most cases, for it gives the best balance between transient response and warmth. S slow gives some more presence and slightly more impact but is also slightly fatiguing. Not as bad as the sharp filter that I would not use. Then the sound settings. These are more subtle. Setting 1 gave a wide stereo image with limited depth while setting 3 gave more depth to the image while also sounding more upfront and dynamic. Setting 2 was somewhere in between. You might experience these settings differently since it all has to do with the amp and speakers you use. Overall the sound quality is good for this price category. The lows and the highs are even very good while the mid range is less open and less textured. I therefore range it top level in my setup 2 to entry level in my setup 1. The DA10 costs about 1200 euros including VAT which is a fair price for a DAC and preamp of this quality and you get a balanced class A headphone amp as a bonus. The build quality is very good and operation is easy. You might miss a remote control though. This time I have covered the internals a bit deeper only to show you that the geographic origin of the designers does not tell anything about the quality of design. 
And as far as manufacturing is concerned, what is not manufactured in China nowadays? For me, it was an interesting first meet with a Yulong product. That's it for this week. There will be another video next Friday as always at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you'll be warned when new videos are out. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks to all that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and thus trustworthy. If you also feel like supporting my work, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.